Welcome to Electra Online. Now in the previous video we found a good equation to determine the velocity at the bottom of a pipe in case we had a natural flow system with friction and we realized that the velocity would not be equal to the square root of 2gh but that it would be equal to the square root of 2g times the quantity h minus the frictional head loss. Basically the frictional head loss makes it so that it seems as if the supply tank was actually lower by that amount. Of course, the unit for frictional head loss is in meters, so it would essentially have the effect of lowering the supply tank and therefore have a slower velocity at the end. But we have another equation, another way of looking at things. Let's start, before we get to the very end, by the equation over here. And then, what we're going to do here is instead of writing the frictional head loss, we're going to replace it by what the frictional head loss equation is equal to. So we, we replace F sub L by the equivalent. Now right away we realize that the G's cancel out, and then we realize that we have two terms that contain V squared. We have a V squared here and a V squared there. Of course, V squared is the velocity at the bottom. It's actually V2, but we'll just leave out the 2 for now to make it simpler. So we want both terms with the V on the left side, so we take this term, move it to the left, so it's going to be FL divided by 2D times V squared, so FL times divided by 2D times V squared on the left. On the right side, we still have G times H1. Then we place what's inside the brackets here, so we first factor out the V squared from both terms, and then we want to write it over common denominator. So instead of 1 over 2, we write 1 times D over 2 times D, so I have a common denominator. We write both of them over the same common denominator, so we get V squared is equal to D plus FL over 2D equals GH1. Then what we want to do is we want to multiply the 2 over here, so we have 2GH. Again, we always like to have that concept of the square root of 2GH when we find the velocity, because that's what it would be if there was no friction at all. So then if we take the square root of both sides, we get the square root of 2GH, but now we also have the term d divided by d plus fl, which ends up in reverse, of course, because the d goes to the numerator and the d plus fl goes to the denominator. So we end up with this, take the square root of both sides, we have that. So now we're going to look at this form of the equation instead of this form of the equation in two ways. The first thing we're going to do is say, what if the friction force, and therefore the friction fraction, what if it goes to zero? Well, if this goes to zero, we have d over d, which is one, we end up with the velocity being the square root of 2gh, which is what we expect. If there's no friction and there's natural flow with no friction, the velocity at the bottom would simply be the square root of 2gh. But what if the friction force is very large? Could it ever be that the frictional head loss is so large that it's greater than the initial height? Well, not really. That's not sensible. We, because if that was the case, the water would flow from the reservoir into the supply tank, and that's never going to be possible because we know the supply tank is higher than the reservoir. So the water is not going to be flowing backwards uphill. So if for some reason F sub H is much, much larger than H1, that doesn't make any sense. But what we find is that as FH becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, the flow becomes slower and slower and slower. And so in the limit, when the term FL becomes much, much larger than D, the diameter of the pipe, then essentially this fraction then becomes close to 1 over F times L. And so if we replace this by 1 over F times L, notice that in the limit, the velocity will be approximate to the square root of 2GH times 1 over FL, and if this becomes really, really big, then that fraction becomes very, very small, but not until this reaches infinity will that fraction actually become zero. So essentially the water will begin to flow slower and slower and slower, very slow in the end, but never zero and definitely never negative. So this would then be the limiting case when FL becomes really large relative to the diameter of the pipe, the water simply will begin to flow very, very slowly when it gets to the bottom, but never get to be zero. And that's the significance of this concept when we're trying to figure out the natural flow with friction. So normally we can leave it at this when we know that the frictional head loss is not that big relative to initial height, but if it becomes really big, we need to think about, about it in this fashion. And that is how it's done.